Listen, we have to uh, take a break. You know, that's what we have to do first thing in the morning because the company needs money. Yeah, we have to start by taking a break. Yeah. Like, they want us to break all the time. <laughs> Constantly breaking. The first thing you do when you get on is break. It's so funny, you know. I figure we have enough commercial breaks, you know. So yesterday, um... I know, I walked in on that. Oh, you did walk in I on that? I walked in and walked out. <laughs> you know, so so Tom comes to me, our general manager, and he says, this is unbelievable. I, you know, I sh I'm sure he doesn't want me talking about this, but I don't care. He walks in on me, okay? And, um... <laughs> so funny. He, he walks in on me, and, uh... You're in the middle of trying to plan a show. I'm trying to do the show. <laughs> so he needs Set up your next right. Break. So he needs money for something. He he, he he like there's something that he's got an idea. He has an idea. He needs to raise money for something. So he's got, he says, "Do you think we could have a sponsor for the Mike Walker game, the National Enquirer thing we do mm -hmm. every Friday?" Yes. I said, "Tom." Another commercial? Because no, all they're going to do is mention. It's not a commercial. It's not a commercial. I was thinking about it in my car this morning. He goes, it's not a commercial. What is it? He goes, it's just the guy says, brought to you by, you know. It's a sponsorship. It's just a sponsorship. I go, but Tom, don't you run enough commercials to have money to pay for stuff? You mean, now I've got to put more commercials in? It's not a commercial. He's just going to say, brought to you by. I said, well, I'm against it. And then he was trying to pump up, we'll have somebody else say it. You won't have to say yeah, it. I said, well, what's the difference? It's still a commercial to me. We have enough commercials. Well, that's why I thought it wouldn't be more clutter, because somebody else will say it. Yeah, he's insane. I go, well, you mean you can't pay for stuff as it is? You, you, at what point are you going to have some money around here? I didn't see how it ended because me and Robin, as soon as, as soon as it started getting heated, yeah. me and Robin just walked out. Yeah, we ran out. We both said, couldn't take it, couldn't take it. So then he, he wouldn't take no for an answer. He said, I'm going to have Paul Turner, who's our voiceover guy, cut a spec spot. Right. You know, so I said, you well, can hear. So I can hear it. I go, I know what it's going to sound like. It's going to sound. The National Enquirer game brought to you by. Must clutter up the show. Must clutter the show. He doesn't get it. He just, just doesn't get it. Just give the introduction. I just, well, I want to clutter the show more. I, I don't understand. Infinity had re record earnings and stuff. Yeah, it doesn't matter. That has evidently that has nothing to do with us. Doesn't have anything that, to do yeah. with this Last year. Show. <laughs> that was That's the, the reason why we had record earnings. We still have to figure Gosh. out how to get money. No, it's like it always comes down to like you know we got to do something you know more. So I go Jesus Christ! At what, what point do you have money for something? We're hardly on. There's so many commercials, but he right. has to add another. The money was for a security guard. But it's not a commercial. Right. So it's now up to me to figure out how to pay for the security guard. It's like I'm like individual like, things now. Are yeah. Going to be by commercial. We need new pencils around here. <laughs> I'm like, what? What do you mean? What do you mean? We need to. Uh, I mean, I have to pay. For, why don't you just? Why don't you just reach into my pocket? <laughs> have Gary <laughs> wear a sandwich board. <laughs> it's so funny. Could we plaster a poster on your forehead? Yeah. <laughs> We'll do it like the baseball game. I said, you mean the thing. commercials you're running aren't paying for this stuff? You mean you need more, you need, I need to add more commercials. Well, my answer is no. I prefer not to. And then now, now it'll be even vindictive and, you know. Well, now, that, but, but you got to yeah. listen to the spec. You haven't even listened. No. Now, I don't know what that's going to sound like. No, we, right. How did it end? Because you know, Robin and I left when it was just getting, like, <laughs> well, you got to go I, back I, Eventually, forth. I had to get back to concentrating on what I was going to do in my next. Because he wasn't going to let go. No, he wasn't going to let no. go. He was gnawing on my foot. <laughs> So I said, all right, why don't we listen to Paul Turner's spec tape? I'm gonna, he goes, I'm going to have Paul Turner uh, uh, do, do a sample one. Why don't we do this? Then I, saw, I heard him latching on to Fred, and I left the room. Oh, he goes, God. Fred, who is the one that tells Paul Turner what to do? Oh, now Fred, and Fred was like, and Fred's so out of it. He's like, what? But what? John and I, we met in the hall. He was, I'm so you believe it. it was great. That? Yeah. You believe? No, I know you. You heard the whole thing. You were jerking him around. Of he was. He knows no. you're jerking him around. You're a little too obvious. I said well, before I, I have to say being... something, I'm getting out. Oh, yeah. All right, you left. Yeah, because I he... didn't even see you leave. Oh, everybody leaves leave. me. Me and Robin saw each other the hall. We go, oh my god. No, it's better you leave because I know then Tom gets all threatened when I you guys know. are sitting there listening. When everybody starts to pile in on. At it. first, I thought he was making a joke. Yeah, I'm I surprised he asked it. you that, and, and, and without knowing that you're going to get upset by it. No, 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 no. First, he comes in, he goes, "I need to talk to you after the show." And I'm like, oh. You say, I don't have time. You, you know, I mean, I sit here for five hours. Talk to me during the show. I don't care. 
<laughs> we need to talk because we should because talk after. Yeah, I say I say I don't really want to talk after the show. I want to go home. We have to talk now. I'm here for five hours doing the show. I, I got you know commercial breaks. Talk to me during the commercial break. I don't care. It upset me. I have a great idea. All right, I'll talk to you. I need a two second conversation with yeah, you. Yeah, it's it's never a t it's never a two second conversation. He always prep. Yeah, you're right, Jackie. Two seconds. I need a two second conversation, and it's never two seconds. How can that be two seconds? You're adding a commercial on right. my show. Yeah. Does he know the commercials are, are a sore spot with you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm adding a commercial. I don't care. <laughs> It's not a commercial. But it's not no, a commercial. It's a commercial that's not a commercial. Right. So if it's not a commercial, what do they put that on the log list? How do you sell it? How do you get money for that? The only way to pay for security is if you add more commercials. Like, what about the ones I'm running? Charge more money for those. Charge charge a couple extra bucks for those. No. <laughs> no. It's easier to add more. But he was so funny because it wasn't anything that he was doing. Yeah. It's not a sponsorship. It's not a commercial. Yeah. It's just Paul Turner saying yeah. brought to but you. But mix it in with the other 3,000. You know, it's, it's enough. It's enough. Stop the bleeding. Right in words. the intro. They kind of have some integrity. <laughs> <laughs> I think most people would just go, yeah. Yeah, sure. Who cares? Who cares? Why not? Anything will be brought to you by. Anything for a security guy. <laughs> I'm going to start talking now. That's brought to you by. And we have security people throughout the building, but evidently it's my job to raise money for them. The company doesn't buy anything. No. We have to supply everything for ourselves. What do you think? <laughs> God. This is a great idea. <laughs> no, it's not. Another bad idea. Your safety is important to us. Make a few extra bucks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we'll pay for safety if you put in another commercial. Let's clutter the show up more. <laughs> it's not cluttered enough. We're trying to entertain people, so we try to write an entertaining opening <laughs> yeah. to the National Enquirer game. Let's put a commercial in. <laughs> Let's make it a not entertaining. We're protecting you with so, all of commercials. During, during the show... During the show, there's always some intrigue going on. And I didn't talk about it yesterday on the show because I just needed time to calm oh, down. Oh, you should have seen your facts. I was watching the whole dynamic. Yeah, yeah. Oh. You were, you know, like, you, oh, your head was about yes. to explode. Yeah, I, I, I sit there and I rub <laughs> my head and I go, I don't believe I'm in another dumb conversation. And Two he seconds. never knows yeah. how irritating he is. Yeah, I wish he wouldn't have to talk to me about it. I wish he'd call my agent. I tell him, call my agent. Don't clutter my mind up with your crap. And then I'll discuss it with my agent. Robin and I knew that your head was about to explode, though. Yeah, no, he doesn't know it. Left, but he, he, starts he's leaning, like he starts leaning because, further over the console. Because it doesn't matter to him what I feel. It no, doesn't no, no, matter. No. I'm not a human being. Howard, Howard, Howard. No, no, no. It's not another commercial. It's right. not. Because <laughs> you're like, oh, Tom, it's another it'll, commercial. It'll no, 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 Tom, so charge more money for the present commercials and raise money. No. no. But, 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 but this is just a sponsorship. <laughs> I know. Crazy. I'm crazy. I wonder how long ago he thought of that idea, and you know whether it took him like a couple of weeks to <laughs> work. No, nah. he, he he doesn't get that I'm a human being with feelings. It's 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 just unfathomable to him. It's always like you don't understand. Right, I'm stupid. <laughs> All right, I got to take a break. Money has to come from somewhere. <laughs> yeah. And usually it's from this show. It's not coming out of my pocket. Yeah. How about another show? Add something to another show and pay for this. It doesn't have it's to come directly from me. Show. It's out of the time we get to talk. Oh. It's always coming out of the time. You know, let's slice more of the time you talk. Do it. <laughs> How about, like, during the afternoon show? Whoever, who's on in the afternoon? Uh, Will Pender. During the Will Pender show, spots is something. Spots something. And pay for it that way. There's a whole other 20 hours. You know what? We can pay for that security guard from the Will Pender you know show. How, right. I mean, or the, or the, like, the top the, five countdowns. The Bob and, and Slappy show. I don't care which show it comes out of. We do, like, top five countdowns in the afternoon. We should just sponsor that. You know? Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah, sponsor the top five countdowns. Why does it, in other words, if I need a security guy, why does it have to come out? Because it's because it's for you, right? It's for me. You have to suffer for it, right? So there's another way to just clog up and clutter the program. Yeah, Doug, you're on the air. Moment you can't talk. Hey, Howard. Yeah. Why don't we have uh, your bowel movement sponsored by the Isla mattress, and then uh, Robin's period? <laughs> Wait a second, you're on to something. The Campex people. Yeah, because that wouldn't cost. That, that that would be funny. And all right, I'll suggest that to Tom. <laughs> hey Tom, okay. We tried that once. We we may, in fact we should play yeah, this going into the commercial. So funny. One time we had Gary call Bucky, our one of our sales guys. He's like the top sales guy, and say, "Gee, do you think um, you think that you could get someone to sponsor Howard's bowel movements?" It started off with burps, burps and farts. farts. <laughs> but, and Bucky was like, "I think we can do it." In a second. In yeah. a second. In a second, I could sell that to my computer guys. 
<laughs> did you ever hear that tape? I, can make I heard it. You did, yeah. Okay. Yeah, definitely, I did. All right. I've been listening for 17, 18 years. All right, thanks, Rick. Uh, you want to play that going into the break? I'm going to find it in the book. Oh, all right. So I may have it for you out. You'll read it to you. You're going to find it in the book. <laughs> no, I've got a book yeah, you don't have to find it. It's all right. All right, if you find it real quick. I don't want to press you. I'm doing the best I can, man. No, I, I know that. I know you are. All right. Listen, let's take a break. We'll hear that some other time. <laughs> Can we sponsor Fred looking for the commercial? Can we get Fred another right, We're going to be back. We got You know what? Never mind, Tom. Let's move on. But you know what the funny thing was? You said, I thought the time, I'm really not into it. And then he kept going. Well, no. No, you don't understand. It's just well, that's he, my bit, because he then starts leaning further over the console, because you right. start backing away. He's going like to yeah, he's gonna use all his sales technique on it. You know me. who he is? You ever see Dagwood, and the salesman gets his foot right, in the door? Right. And, yeah. oh. and then it becomes this tug of war. And once I say, I don't think I'm into it, he doesn't give up. He doesn't get it. And then I start rubbing my head and, like, moaning. And he still doesn't Every give up. The conversation is now 25 minutes. He could sell ice in the winter. Well, you have to relent because he won't say, take he won't no. Take no. He's a rabid wolf. He's yeah, right behind that no is a yes. No is a yes. Yes is a no. Because you fill your face full of food and put your nose right to what you're reading. <laughs> right. And it's all the way down. It's like it's so obvious you don't want to be bothered. Right, right, right. And then he starts pulling on the hair. Tom is still talking. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Are you listening? <laughs> anyway, we got to take a break. We'll be back right after these words. I, I was upset last night anyway. I couldn't even think straight. Why? I, I had a weird experience with um, a photographer on the streets of New York. Oh. It was very, very odd, and I'm, I'm still perplexed by it. The guy was just being a dickhead. You know, I'm walking down the street with my friend. Mm -hmm. Of course, it was a woman. As soon as they see me with a woman, they want a picture. So, you know, I accept that. I, well, listen, that's but, part of the yeah. that's part of yeah. the deal. I'm walking. The guy's shooting and shooting and shooting. Boom, 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 boom. It's almost like a like a a terrorist. You know, boom, 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 boom. It's an attack. And it's like you know what? I, I yeah, start to think. Yeah, he's got enough pictures at a certain. Point. Yeah, and I start to think. Gee. I didn't come out here today to be, you know, everyone is walking on the street here. I didn't come out here today to be to be in a photo shoot. Mm -hmm. If I want to be in a photo shoot, I'll go hire a photographer somewhere. Right. Pose. Get yeah. dressed. <laughs> I, don't, I don't really, I'm not here, I'm not here for this guy's photo shoot. It's terrorism. I don't care what you tell me. But, all right, listen, it goes along with the territory, right? But the guy's boom, 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 and boom, boom. And how long is this going on? Seemed like an hour, must have been maybe... Four or five minutes. Okay. All right, you know what I mean? And it's you're just, walking as he's doing this. Well, I started walking, then I stopped some... Then, of course, it causes a whole scene, so these kids come up, and they want to talk, and I'm shaking their hand. I, you know me, I'm not a mm -hmm. dick. Mm -hmm. So, I finally... The guy won't stop. The whole time, everything... Right, right, right. So, then he runs across the street, because he sees me coming up to him. I said, why don't you come back here and talk to me? He goes, okay. Comes back, and I said, you know what? You're an effing dick. That's what I said to him. I said, you got some goddamn nerve. I said, what? He goes, what are you going to... I said, what is the problem? Did I do something to you? Uh -huh. I mean, what is the problem? I'm not out here. He goes, if you threaten me, he goes, if you threaten me, uh, you better watch out. I go, I didn't threaten you. I asked what the problem is. I said, you're an effing dick. I said, y y at what point do I get to uh, walk down the street without you causing a scene? So, okay, that was it. He runs away, runs. Because believe me, I now I see why you guys want to pop these guys. Yeah, I was going to say, are you going to turn into Sean Penn? No, uh, nah, I ain't, I ain't, I ain't going to turn into Sean Penn. Besides, I'll get my ass kicked if I turn into Sean Penn. So anyway, uh, I go to a restaurant, I eat my dinner. I was, I was like, what the hell? You know, well, forget about yeah, it. Yeah, try to get over it. I walk out of the restaurant, walk on one block. There he is. Wait a second. Oh. A car pulls up, runs over my shoe. Now, I got a big shoe. Thank God. The tip of my shoe gets caught under the cab. The cab comes to a screeching halt. The guy's in the back seat snapping away. Are you kidding? And I'm like, what the hell? And it was dark outside, so like my eyes are blinded. I'm going, what is going on here? No one. That's how Lady Died died. I almost walked right into another car. I was so blinded by the light, and I'm in the middle of a cross street. I literally almost walked into another car, and I'm like, what the hell? See, at that point, he's not even looking for pictures. He's just going to show gonna, you. He was he's using it like he was using it like a gun. Right, exactly. So then I went, "What is he doing?" He's creating a story. So I'm walking, yeah. So I'm walking down the street, and, and a couple of people walked up to me, and I, one old guy, I don't even think he knew who I was, goes, "That guy's an ass." I go, "I know. I don't know what's going on." 
I start walking some more. The cab pulls up again alongside me, starts snapping away. At this point, I'm pissed. I'm ready to whack this guy. But, okay, I know that he's trying to bait me. He's trying to get me into something. All of a sudden, I turn, and the guy's there, and he's snapping away through the window, and I go up to the, I go up to the cab now. Because I'm going to yell at the cab driver because he hit my foot, and I want to get my goddamn, I got his license plate number because the guy's going to have his license taken away. I go up to get it. The guy screams. I'm not even talking to him now. I'm talking to the cab driver. This is what I'm involved in. This is my night. So it's like it's like being in Palestine. So I go up to the cab driver, and the guy goes, I'll teach you. The cab. Don't, no, no. The, no, the, the, the back. Driver. The guy in the back, he goes, what does he exactly say? He says to me, I, I tell you, this place is nuts. He goes, you, um, you better not mess with me. You threatened me. Now, wait a second. I walked out of my house. I didn't know. I don't know who this guy is. All I know is he started in with me. I didn't start in with him. You threatened me. You better not threaten me. I go, you better watch your effing mouth. Because you know what I'm going to do to you? Now I am threatening you. Here's what I'm going to do to you, you ass. I'm going to find out who you are, and I'm going to have every one of my listeners walk around with cameras and, 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 and flash them in your face and run by in cabs and hit you on the foot. So it's turned into this whole thing. And as I'm talking to him, he's snapping away with the glass rolled up so I can't get to him. Do you have any idea who he's shooting for? No, he's, he's a freelance freelancer. guy who lives in my neighborhood. It was so ridiculous. You know, it's weird because, Howard, they showed this time. It was just silly. It was just silly and dangerous, quite frankly. And the cab driver should be arrested for... for uh... Why didn't you call the police? Well, it's really funny you say that because I walked down and I saw some cops on the corner. And this guy was long gone. Where am I going to go? And you know what? I want, you know what? I got a life. I don't want to sit yeah, there and be involved in this. that guy, if the police had come, he'd think twice about it the next day. Yeah, well, you know what? I, I, don't, I just wanted to go home and get, get some sleep. It was already getting close to 8 o'clock. I wanted to watch Friends. I, I just want to have, you know, it was, it was silly nonsense. It was, it was hijinks. And I was just like, wow, this is stupid. This is just dumb. But you should never get into... This is the Stedman Graham... Right. That no, guy thing that we're talking no, no, I didn't no, yell at anyone. Not any different. Mm -mm. I didn't I didn't it's hit anyone. Not any different. You're the celebrity you and you're wrong. No. Oh yeah, yeah, right. Automatically That's I'm what wrong. I'm yeah. You're the celebrity and no matter what, you're wrong. You're wrong. Alec Baldwin got in trouble because they were trying to photograph his, his baby. Son. Yeah, or no, no, he, but he all he did was he took he put shaving cream on the guy's window. Yeah, but you can't touch anybody. That's the that's the rule. You can talk to these guys, but you can't touch them. But I'll tell you, if that guy hangs, but, uh, hangs uh, you long enough, to them, mm. he'll bait you. According yeah. to them, you can't even talk to them because then right. you get into a situation like that. You mm. started it. As Whatever. No, he started it. No, I'm saying as, as far as he Right, started, right, yeah. You well, that's, that, that logic was driving me crazy because I'm going there. This guy's like, hey, man, you started with me. Right. I'm you a, noticed I, he was there. Yeah, because I noticed he was there and the guy's just shooting away. I say, how did I start in with you, dude? You're the one who, who built your day around around uh, ambushing me. Right. As but, far as he's concerned, he's just doing his job. Yeah. The moment you say something to him, you start. Yeah, right, right. That's in his mind. Yeah. He really thinks that's absolutely. how convoluted his logic absolutely. is. It's true. You know what? Yeah, you're absolutely right. And that, and I'm, I'm sitting there going, this is why the world is full of idiots. You know, this is, I mean, the, the guy's an idiot. He yeah. doesn't understand. He started with me. But I didn't walk out of my apartment looking for a photo shoot. You know what they're thinking yeah. is? Right. I, I'll tell you, because I, I know these guys really well. They did a documentary on the paparazzi in New York a couple of years ago. Yeah, right, right. So they showed how uh, Michael J. Fox had a baby, mm -hmm. and there was a $50,000 bounty on getting a picture of the baby. So this guy's living in his car outside of Michael J. Fox's house. I'm right. living in his car. Right. Wait, he's going to make the money. He's like, he's like, listen, if I get this picture, that's uh, two months' pay. Yeah. So the guy that's making the documentary says, do you ever feel bad about this? And he goes, you know what, man? F Michael J. Fox. He's a celebrity, man. F him. Once he's a celebrity and he's out, he's an effing a-hole. And he's open game and it's his tough crap. Mm. I mean, that's their opinion. It's just like you're a celebrity yeah. and now you're his so now, so now I have a right to uh, have a cab driver run over my foot and uh, and uh, almost caused me to walk into another car. It's unbelievable. These guys were crazed. But well, that's what, you know, and I'm like, what's the big deal? is to get legal with them. I know. Well... I didn't have my lawyer with me. <laughs> but that's Rich, you're exactly on the air. what Robert De Niro had to do. You know, they mm -hmm. started pestering him. Yep. He had he got involved with the cops and they staged a set up and arrested people. Yeah. Rich, you there? No. Yeah, I don't know. It was weird. It was a weird night, I'll tell you that. Hey, John, you're on the air. Yo, Howard, how you doing? Hey, bro. I, 
I want to tell you something about the Mets. By the way, can I play uh, a game for Mets tickets or something? I don't have any Mets tickets. Mets tickets. All right, hey, listen. Uh, anyway, that pitcher last night, I heard that his old man's, like, doing time for, like, drug dealing or drug trial. Maybe that's why he was throwing the ball all over the place, man. They said, that on, the, they said that on the telecast? No, no, I heard it prior to the telecast. Hmm. They didn't say it on the telecast. That. I never heard but, uh, anything about that. Anyway, I think, I think was, he got that wrong, but maybe you don't. I don't know. No, I did hear it. You know, I could be. I, it may be another pitcher, but it's definitely a St. Oh. Louis pitcher. Yeah, you want to definitely get that one right. Jesus. Yeah. But anyway, you said anything like that last night, right? Oh, well, they wouldn't say it on uh, telecast like that. <laughs> I mean, sure not they would. Natural... <laughs> nah. But, but anyway, he was so you wouldn't even want to get in the batter's box. It was why? Oh my gosh, it was brutal. Wow. Talk about it, a guy with a gun. Here's a guy throwing ninety miles an hour and he doesn't know where it's gonna go when it leaves his arm. Well I'm a fag. Strike? I'm a fag. I was watching friends during the med game. <laughs> oh. <laughs> could be a strike and it could be a ball that knocks you out. Yeah. Yeah, but also by the way, they do this stuff. It I just like that the guy throws a few I just like that the guy throws a few wild pitches and now his whole family is addicts. <laughs> I mean, no, but nice. Just throw the goddamn ball. I think Robin's you know, making more sense about that. They had to change his whole pitching stance around and all that because yeah. his, uh... He was injuring his arm yeah. because of the way he threw. Uh, hey, dude, I got to go. I got to take a break. All right, later. Good. Later. Care, all right. And they were saying, you know, he's a young guy, and this was the beginning of his career, and it was he was having a great career, and this could be a career-ending situation for him. Right. We got to take a break, and we'll be back right after these words. With a lot of stuff. I'll give you more information on the Halloween promotion and everything. Freddie, what are you doing, brother? I hear you. R really, really, man. Shut up. Sit down. I am sorry. Oh, my. Oh, oh, yes. Oh, oh, yes. I told you not to be stupid, you moron. Yes, sir. That's a good one. Yes, sir. That's a good one. The Howard Stern Show. Oh, my God. The Howard Stern Show. The average radio listener listens for 18 minutes. The average Howard Stern fan listens for, are you ready for this? Okay. An hour and 20 minutes. How can that be? Answer most commonly given. I want to see what he'll say next. But, but what about the people who hate Stern? Good point. The average Stern hater listens for two and a half hours a day. But, but if they hate him, why do they listen? Most common answer. I want to see what he'll say next. Right. You, boy, you heard it right. That is from the... Uh, most fabulous movie, Private Parts, starring Howard Stern. I can't even bear to watch that movie. I tried to watch it a couple of weeks ago, and uh, I don't know. <laughs> kind of upset me. I think you can understand why, seeing as how I'm not married anymore. Tends to uh, get to me. Now you have to look at it like it's a fairy tale. Yeah. Like this was a made-up life for Howard Stern. There you go. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Not anything real. I have trouble watching it. It was real at one point. But you can't watch it that way, otherwise you get depressed. Gets me upset, yeah. <laughs> Tends to upset me. I feel so silly watching it. Start to cry. Yeah. Yeah, i got to make a new movie. Oh, that'll be a tragedy. This next one won't be a No, not this time it won't be about me. Oh, God. Oh, oh. <laughs> No, this time it won't be about me. Well, everybody who was in that movie is doing pretty well. I got to tell you, first of all, Alice and Janney just won the Emmy for West Wing. West Wing. Uh, she won a Tony after uh, she was in the movie, you know? Yeah, Alice and Janney is the woman who played my program director in Washington, and the guy who played Pig Vomit. Paul Giamatti. Paul Giamatti has worked in every film with Jim Carrey and uh, just a, a million films I could he name. He was just in that duet with uh, Gwyneth Paltrow. Yeah. And uh, he's working like crazy. And then uh, I just uh, got an email from uh, Mary McCormick, who played my wife. What's she up to? How would I know? We're separated. Oh. oh. Uh, no, she is <laughs> shooting a movie in England with Minnie Driver. Oh. With Minnie Driver. And uh, she's got a whole bunch of things going on. And then uh, who else have I heard from? I don't know. Did she also do a stage play in England? And she's been yeah. working, working, working. Working nonstop. So there you go. So a lot of people doing well from that movie. You know? Getting a lot of recognition. We're waiting for our first Oscar. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they usually don't come about five years after the movie's been released. They re-release that movie. I know it's ready now. I got offered a bunch of other movies, but I tell you, you read these scripts. 
Although, you know, it's funny. It's so weird, too. You never know what's going to sell. I, I was always afraid to make the Fart Man movie. I always thought it was great. And then I realized I should have just made it and screw it. But You're I put ahead a, of your time. Yeah, I put a lot of thought into these things and... Sometimes too much thought. While you're thinking, other people make a movie. I know. Other people don't care. <laughs> and not to mention that from private parts, Betty Thomas is a household word now as a director. Yeah. You know. She works all the time, too, and yeah. is producing and directing now. And me, I'm still sitting here. <laughs> <laughs> Although I was on the phone last night in my role as executive producer of Son of the Beach, I was on the phone with Tim Stack, the what star. What is the executive producer doing? The executive producer was reviewing and giving script notes on the first script of the new season. Now, how is that? Do they email you the script? No, I get it delivered. Ah, so it's a hard copy. Hard copy. I don't like reading it. I don't like printing it out. I like a hard copy. I read that there script. Mm -hmm. I try to envision what it would look like on screen. Mm. And then... Um, Do you give copious notes? Yeah. <laughs> I give notes and then... Tim tells me to shut up, and that's the end of it. <laughs> no, so I talked to Tim for a while. He's doing great. They're doing great. They're writing some you funny they stuff. They brought in some more writers. They brought in two new guys to uh, help them out because they got to write 22 new scripts. It's a lot of scripts. But the guys, the original three writers, will be writing uh, all of the scripts with these two new guys. Yes, they won't be letting those two new guys off on their own. That's right. Can't have that. Show is way too important. <laughs> I read the funniest mm. thing in, in one of the tabloids about Bette Midler. You know, she's doing one of those sitcom things. Yeah. And uh, they do it in front of a live audience. For some reason or other, they, these sitcoms, they have to put them in front of a live audience like mm -hmm. a Broadway show. Yeah. And during uh, one break, Bette Midler starts screaming at the director, This script isn't funny. We need this. We need that. And she's cursing him out. And her mic was still on. Oh, <laughs> and the whole good. Audience. They should have put that in the show. Oh, I was like, man, that's great. Yeah, that's and then she uh, realized bitch. that her mic was on. And she's like, oh, just kidding. Hmm. <laughs> Trying to play it off for the audience so they don't think she's uh, uh, such a bitch. Yeah, she can get away with that kind of behavior. <laughs> Doesn't fit her public persona. That's what, that, you see, that's what they ought to show on that TV show. It would be a hit. Yeah. yeah. Don't make up stuff. Show us the real stuff. New season of Friends was really good. That, that whole hour was just really strong. Very funny. I full of laughs. I got it. I completely... Uh, I hope you do. I didn't think about it. It would be a catastrophe if you didn't. No, not a catastrophe. They'll rerun it. The uh, <laughs> season premiere of Star Trek Voyager was real good. This is the last season for Star Trek Voyager. You saw the... Season opener. Two hour. Was that a two hour? The first... Uh, uh, there was a two hour episode with the Borg. Yes. Did you say that? Yeah. That was that two hour? Yeah. Oh, I didn't realize. Oh. Someone gave it to me on videotape. I didn't realize it was two hours. Yeah. It was good. Excellent. Yeah, that's a good show. Love that show. Last year? I can't believe it's been seven years. Hmm. It's hard to believe when you're having so much fun. Hmm. Hey, this Saturday night on the TV show, on our TV show, I'm talking about our syndicated television show. Check out Us Tickling Pamela Anderson's Pretty Feet. I got a fax from the tickling uh, community, for lack of a better word. That's you what they call several, themselves. You got uh, faxes from the tickling community. Begging me to tickle Pamela Anderson's feet. Apparently it's a big community and they all write. Because they wanted to see on the TV show her pretty feet, her nubbins. Yeah, they, there was no question they wanted to ask Pam. They just wanted you to tickle her feet. Yeah, they didn't care. <laughs> That's weird. Man. Yeah, it is weird. But we did it. And you, you see, agreed. I know how to talk to these guys, too. And guys, you'll see her pretty feet displayed <laughs> with her pretty polished nails and pretty legs. And Jingle. you even said she had, like, jewels on her toes. Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh. On her toenails, there's little <laughs> diamonds. You go between her toes. So her feet are very prominently displayed and very pretty. And she takes care of her feet. And when we're tickling her, she laughs so uproariously that panties can be seen in her skirt. Well, she tries to struggle and right. get away. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's, that's the lingo. <laughs> she tries to struggle and get away, and when she's bad, I tickle her more. Hey, now. Right. Hey, now. <laughs> I've read enough literature to know how to talk to these guys. When she tries to struggle and get away, we restrain her, holding her pretty legs and feet. Holding her by her ankles. Yeah, we harness her manually, in addition to using ropes. And around her ankles. Both uh, digits and feather 
Right. <laughs> uh, now, where are they this at? country has too much free time. Uh, are they yeah. at where, like, they love to play with feet? Yeah. Because that's yeah. their foreplay, or is that... No, their, they can actually that orgasm. Can that's happen. the end problem. Yeah, but they, they can have a happy ending just from feet. Yeah. That's, that's all you need. That's all you need. Can you imagine that's all you need? Oh! I remember doing it, not really being all that excited. You certainly couldn't have stopped there. No, no, I needed more. <laughs> I ain't saying I didn't want her. It's like you'd do it if it was getting the other person. Oh, yeah. If it would lead to more for you. And then as an additional bonus, we get Natalie in there, and you get to see her pretty feet. Her pretty nubbins. Her pretty nubbins. <laughs> also, they call them nubbins, not cities? Stuttery John goes on location in the Miracle House, and we get some great Gary animation, which you've now seen, and it's yes. great. Yes. Oh, my goodness. Gary's teeth animation. So good. <laughs> you have to see that. It's very, very wonderful. <laughs> Beautiful animation. Beautiful. You can't go wrong. You can't go wrong. It's very fun. Oh. My bull. <laughs> Um, okay, now, uh, just to clear up something, before we went to break, uh, a caller called in and said the guy who was pitching so wildly for St. Louis in the Mets game last night, uh, maybe it had a little bit to do with the fact that his father was in prison. Well, listen to this. The father of Cardinals rookie pitching phenom, Rick Ankiel. That's the guy. Was sent to prison a couple of months early Tuesday for a drug conviction from last year. Ooh. Ankiel's six-year prison term was set to begin July 24th, but he was arrested for last week for allegedly throwing a loaded gun out of his moving pickup truck, so a judge ordered that he begin the drug sentence immediately. <gasps> throwing he, a um, loaded gun out of his pickup truck. He can count on a day pass pretty soon, though, because he still got to be tried for last week's gun charges. Oh, my. I guess there's going to be an empty seat in the players' family section at Bush Stadium for a while. This is from the newsletter jerkoftheweek.com. Whatever that is. Hmm. I don't know why he's a jerk. The father might be one, but... I think they're saying the father's the jerk. Oh. And then it says here, The Cardinals Rick Ankiel is one guy who will never take his father to school on career day. <laughs> While waiting to be jailed for his role in a cocaine and marijuana trafficking operation, the father of the pitching phenom was arrested Wednesday for allegedly throwing a loaded gun from his car. Police chased the elder Ankiel after a motorist complained that a man in a pickup truck had pointed a gun at him. Ooh. Yeah, this is from the Internet. Anything? It looks pretty official. Yeah, sounds real. Yeah, and then here's a uh, story by the Boston Globe saying that the same thing. You know. I always think it's funny when you have to hide your parents because they're the ones who might embarrass you. Because they're out of control. <laughs> you know, you got some prominent guy with a kid who's out of control. Well, in the good news department, as far as we know, his mom is clean. <laughs> okay, so. So far, so good. So, so far, so good. Nobody get too upset. All right, let's take a couple of phone calls, say hello to the folks, because uh, everybody's on the phone. Let's go to Paul. Paul, you're on the air. Yeah, how you doing, Howard? All right, what can I do for you? I just called up to let you know what an a-ho um, Robert De Niro is. Robert De Niro, the famous actor. He's in the hit movie, number one movie of the... Uh... Uh, meet the Parents? Yeah. Robert That's De Niro? Why is he a jerk? Uh, I, we had a few encounters at him where I work. He's, uh, God forbid you get a glimpse of this guy. You know, he's like God's gift to this earth, cursing out people, the room service guys. Oh, forget it. He didn't even want people to get a glimpse at him, even just to acknowledge him or none of the fact. This guy, he's really, he's really, uh, I think he's put himself on a high pedestal, too. Do you understand much. what he's saying? No. I don't either. <laughs> you don't understand. What did he do? I don't understand what he did wrong. Uh, just a few things. Um, Where I was this that he did something wrong? At this hotel where I work at. Oh, you're in a hotel. Boy, exactly. getting getting information from people is like pulling teeth. <laughs> I think what it is, they must tell John the story first, and then they get they think we know what they're right. talking about. They start in the middle or something. Yeah. I, I thought John maybe gave you the rundown or something. No. Uh, all right. Well, anyway, this guy from room service goes up, right, to uh, give him his meal. So this guy's talking to him at the other end of the door, De Niro, and he's not opening the door to sign the the ticket for the guy. So they're going on, like, for five minutes, and this guy's really, like, he's cursing him out, cursing him out. He finally opens the door, grabs the ticket out of his hand. He's like, I'm not signing anything. Grabs his breakfast, slams the door, and then calls down and tries to have the guy fired, practically, just for the guy doing his job, you know? This guy, he's really, he's really a project. <laughs> right. He's Bobby D. Runs a good restaurant, I'll tell you that, that uh, Japanese joint. Good service mm. over there. Good service over there. Hey, thanks, bro. No problem. All right, that. there you he go. No idea what happened, and that guy wasn't really involved with Bobby D. Right. 
He just heard from another guy. Yeah, you can't bad rap Bobby D. Not unless you see Bull, Rocky and Bullwinkle. Right, then you can bad mouth him. It's not like that was Al Pacino on the phone or something. Could that have been him? Yeah, but Mr. Uh, oh, here's the girl who sent me a letter. Mr. She said Man. she got into a fight with O.J. at the airport. What happened to you, honey? Good morning, my love. Oh. Mm. Hubba hubba. Hubba hubba, baby. I love you. All right, what happened to you and O.J.? Oh, I was in uh, Miami Beach for a uh, sales meeting, and I was going to the airport with a couple of coworkers. Checked our bags in, and we're going through the x-ray machine. So two of the coworkers were in front of me, and I'm picking my bags off the x-ray conveyor. So someone comes up and whispers in my ear, hey, look who's in front of you. And I looked, looked again, and it was freaking O.J. I see O.J. I see O.J. He be looking scared. He be looking scared. <laughs> look out. Look out. <laughs> yeah, so what happened next? So then I looked at him, looked at him again, and I said when I heard the verdict, if I ever see him, I'm going to call him a murderer. Mm-hmm. So, aye, aye. Aye, aye, aye. so my heart started beating. And like I said, when I looked at him, I just couldn't believe it was him. And he was like looking me up and down and giving me a big smile. Like Are I you was going to run over there and like, okay, I love you, I love you. Are you a hot chick? Of course I am. Sweetheart. What do you look like? I have uh, blonde hair. Of course. Mm. Blue eyes. Mm. Um, I'm a size two petite. Two? You know That's how small OG two is? Type. You know how small two is? How tall are you? I'm 5'1". Five 5'1", one. Five one with a OG size two. Yeah, very My niece is telling me, she, who's so skinny, she's a size four. Right. Yeah. Size two is... And she's barely... You can barely see her. Pam right. Anderson is a right? size two on You know my bottom. niece, Jackie. It's very thin. Very she's a four. Thin. She's a four. But if you look, think of Pam Anderson, how small yeah. she is, that's yeah. a size two. Pam Anderson's Pam, a size two? On the Anderson's bottom, rack. not on the top. Jesus. <laughs> you must be tight, sweetheart. I yes, know. I am. And, and yeah, yeah, you're size. Well, how big are your boobies? See, that's what I, uh, they're, they're okay. These? I do need to come in for a breast exam. Oh, I good. I'd love to meet you, my angel. Where are you, in California? I'm in Cleveland. Oh, so fly in, honey, for the breast exam on October 20th. I would love to. Let me examine you. Yes, I would be, love that. Maybe there'll be a little kismet here. Oh, yeah. I need a size two. Oh, yeah, I think we'd be a perfect fit. Mike. I only have a size five, six, and seven. I don't have any twos. <laughs> I would love to. But you have to. What, do you fit a size two? Would I fit? Oh, I'll, believe me, I have God, a size two. We would two. be a perfect fit. By the way, I have a size twelve nose, <laughs> so we'll fit fine. Sure, I fit. In fact, in fact it might be a little snug. <laughs> All right, sweetie. So go ahead. So you said one day if I, were you, what were you wearing? A mini skirt? I actually was wearing no. I was wearing just shorts and a t-shirt. Shorts and a t-shirt. You probably yeah. looked hey, hot. I'm in Miami. You know what do you right. expect? Right. That's so you're, the thing. OJ must have uh, been Gaga. So on a scale of one to ten, are you a ten or a five or six? What are you? Uh, an eight. Nine. An eight. An eight or a nine. Oh, that's yeah. pretty good. She's good. Yeah. Oh, you're pretty hot. What would yeah. you say good. Nicole was? Mm. Nicole. Yeah, what would you say on a scale of 1 to 10? What was Nicole? Uh, I think she's a, a 9 or a 10. She's very beautiful. Yeah, okay, I'll all go right. with that. Yeah, all right, go ahead. you got good taste. Yeah. All right, so go ahead. Okay, so, like I said, we made eye contact, and we, he was kind of, like, checking me out. So I pick up my badge, and the two coworkers were in front of me. So I start walking, and I'm like, murderer, murderer, murderer. And he just looks at me. I turn around, I look at him again, and he starts this wicked laugh. <laughs> and I'm like, murder. Wait, did it sound like this? Yeah, Max. <laughs> exactly. It was wicked. It was it was really creepy. It was really creepy. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> so that wasn't the end of it. So my coworkers were like, oh, my God, we're going to get thrown out of the airport. What are you, crazy? So I kept walking, went to our gate, and I sat down for a second. I'm like, oh, this is it. i got to go back find him again because this is nuts. Um, I couldn't believe that he laughed, you know. So I threw my bags down and my coworkers were like, don't go, don't go because we're going to get thrown out of the airport. I'm like, forget that. You know, the guy's a creep. So I go looking up and down the gate looking for him again. Oh, my God. You're out of your mind. <laughs> <laughs> She's on a mission. You know what it is? She got away with saying murder a murderer. Now he didn't kick her ass. Now, now she's starting to think she's powerful. Well, she didn't get the reaction she wanted. He mm. just laughed at her. Yeah, he That's wanted right. him to kill you. <laughs> <laughs> to prove he was a murderer. All right, so go ahead. Yeah, so you go okay. looking up and down, and then do you find him? Yes. And what All happens? Right. So I am like, 
ticked off because I didn't really see him. So I look up, and there he is again, and he's standing with one of his bodyguards. So he taps. He's like 20 feet ahead of me and like 15 feet to my left. So I'm walking up, and he taps his bodyguard on the shoulder, and he points at me and like does his finger up and down like, oh, who does she think she is? So I'm like, murder. He's like, midget. I go, murder. And he's midget. And I'm like, wow. murder. He goes, honky. And I said, murder. I'd rather be a murderer than a midget. No, or honky, man. All right. Murder. He said honky? Yes. He said honky. So I, 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 we were like going at it. People around me were just like laughing and like, yeah, go get him. So I turn around and it was like a dead end. I couldn't really go anywhere. And I'm like, oh, my God. You know, do I, do I turn around and walk past him again? I'm like, oh, screw it. I'll do it. So I turn around and he's looking. He's just like laughing. And <laughs> <laughs> Okay, yeah, get to the end. So he taps his, body, or his bodyguard, says, shut up, B. And I just, you know, kept going, and I'm like, we just kept going at it. Murder, honky, murder. And that's the end of the story. They did, yeah. All right, there you go. So I that was my, Three um, or four encounters of calling O.J. a murderer. And him calling her an idiot and honky and <laughs> midget. midget. I know. It, it's, uh, it's horrible. Well, there you go. Well, come in for your breast exam. That's October 20th. It's uh, mammography day. Well, can I um, talk to John or something? Yeah, hold on. Hold on. I'm looking forward hey, to feeling you up. I love you. I love you. I'm looking forward to feeling you up. I mean, giving you a breast exam. <laughs> All right, hold on. Hey, and if you can, bring OJ in. I would love to. All right. There you go. A, a celebrity encounter. That's pretty funny because OJ says, you know, he's just, he only meets people who like him when he's running around. Oh, she likes him. Sure. <laughs> I think in OJ's world, she does. <laughs> had a good time. Yeah, you had a good time, right, OJ? Had a good time. Yeah. Okay. Uh, by the way, uh, I, I received several faxes about my conversation yesterday with Stuttering John's alcoholism because uh, it said that's completely false, his whole math about for every beer you drink. An hour and the beer goes away? Yeah, t and he says, tell that drunk John you burn point twenty five or 25% of a beer an hour. All right, so, and that makes more sense to me. And old Jackie's in here arguing about that. It's true, it's true. Well, now I see where John gets all his information from. Right. Jackie goes, no, it's, it's true. Hour. Every hour you burn off a beer. And you know that's not true because when you drink a beer, I think it's .02 goes into your system. And an hour wears away .02. No. He says it's 25% uh, of .02. And five beers in an hour makes you .1, which is the legal limit or it used to be. Again, I'm, I'm, I don't. I think your math is. I fuzzy. took the stupid fuzzy course. math. <laughs> you got fuzzy math. <laughs> That's it. That's something fuzzy. <laughs> All right, on my phone is Leanna. I'll tell you who Leanna is real quick, and then we'll talk to her after the commercial break. It's funny that that advice to Kay, Casey uh, corners me yesterday. He says, "You know, I went to the Jet game on Sunday, and I got to admit, I was jealous of those guys." I said, jealous of which guys? He goes, the Jets. I said, why were you jealous? They lost. He says, uh, they're out there playing. He says, I was supposed to be a football player. And I... I agree with him. <laughs> yeah. He goes, I'm supposed to be a football player, and I didn't take my shot. And I said, I never realized you were that good. Were you? Uh, we, we, could you have been a pro? He goes, I don't know. He says, but I should have tried. No, it's, it's not, it's not and I said, listen, it's not too late. How old are you? He tells me he's 25 years old. 23 years old, right? 25. 25. 25. I said, there are guys... Who are just starting. Yeah. I got a friend, Marco Battaglia. He's like 28. He still hasn't gotten a play. He's on the team, but he can't get, he can't get in a game. Look at Vinny Testaverde. How old is he now? 37. And when did he become the, the main guy? A couple of years ago. Right. Yeah. yeah. Well, no, are you going to do it? It, it, the thing is, I, I said to him, you should thank God you're not a football player. You, 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 they, these guys wake up in pain every day. Their bodies are completely racked. He goes, I don't care. This is what I was supposed to that's do. That's what he but, wants to do. But Let it, him do it. it. That's, 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 that's what I missed. I mean, the thing is, of course, no, I'm not good enough. But the fact is, I never... How do you know you're not good enough? Exactly, because I never I never took that shot. What position are you? Um, well, punter would Lock be the best it. thing, but I'm not a punter, though. Wait, Howard, Howard, I got this whole rap yesterday. Hunter punter would be the best the thing, but I'm not a punter. I'm not. What are you? Because yeah, that's not a football player. Well, he's tell a, me what you are. He's a quarterback. Uh, I played a uh, quarterback. We played. We ran the option. You know what I mean? So it's like almost like a running back type thing. 
You should uh, run, I, I'm, I'm naive. You ran the option? You ran the option. That's an offense that you right. run. And it's like you don't pass it all. You really you run the ball all the time. So you would come in just for the running? So when you come in, everyone would know they're going to run the ball. No, 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 no. That's just an offense that, that, that we run. You should know that the option is virtually non-existent in pro football. You can't, you can't run it. You know? That's a college. It's a college So how formation. are you going to be a football player? No, I'm saying I, I think um, what, my best thing would, would be to try and play special teams, which are, which are like... Punting. Right. Punting kickoff. Well, why don't you go camp and kick a few balls and see if they? You know, it, I, I'm thinking about it. You know, I, I would you consistently get, get it over the goalpost. Well, that's that's a field goal, but the, the yeah, punt can is, you is, kick that? No, I can't kick field goals. You can't. No, all you can do is punt. Right. And then, can but, you then punt? but then, but then, the kickoff team when you run down and try and cover, uh, tackle the guy. Yeah. That's kickoff. Uh, you know, kick. So are you really good at that? Uh, no. You so, want to be one of the guys running. Howard, so I got this whole rap. So then why, wait, so wait, so why would you think that you could be a professional athlete? I didn't, I didn't say that. I said, uh, you if you're not, you're not good at it, why would you even right, bother? I, I, who, who, you know, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm all right then. I'm all right at it. No, but there are guys who are great at it. Exactly. But, <laughs> but exactly. where would you as play, as, Casey? What's that? Where would you play? I, I punting would be, the, would be. No, the, the, I mean, where, what league? They, you're not good enough you know for what? that league. What about it the new? It, what about the knows. new? What about the new Vince McMahon? Exactly, league? that's what I'm saying. There's all these new. There's, there's an arena league. There's all these other things. I mean, you know, there's just stuff that you, you need, need a try. league where guys who suck can play. That's what I need. You're the same football player I am. Howard, can I football player? Can I say something? The start of the AFL. I think I should have been a football player based on this conversation. Can I say something about Casey? Yeah. Casey played quarterback in college, and he was like, he was like, okay, but his team won a championship. He punted. He actually led the league in punting at one point. So it's great. Oh. I, said, I said, that's great because punters are hard to come by. And Casey goes, I, I don't like punting. I, I'm, I'm not in the head it, for it, that. It's not, that's not like a football player. You know what I'm saying? You know what I miss? Dude. How, I, miss, I miss being bruised. I miss bleeding. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I miss, I miss yeah, being sore. Going, but John hits you in the head with a frying pan. Right, that's just what it is, man. punch you and, 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 I, Well, douchebag, let me just tell you something. If you're not good, you should forget it. If you've well, got, right. I'm not saying I'm not If you're saying telling I'm not me, good, why don't you go? Listen, this is what you ought to do. They have tryouts in a few months. You know, they start up again in a few months right. after the after the Super Bowl. They start they start right in. You do like what Piazza did in baseball. He went. He just tried out. He, 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 this guy put him on the team. He got on what the Dodgers. Perfect example. Wayne Corbett. There you go. He wasn't invited to camp. He just walked into camp and said, "Hey, I think I'm good enough to play. Let me try it." And they said, "Sure, okay. Well, what do they got to lose?" Right. You're a white guy. They go, "Oh, a white guy. We could sell that." There's another white guy. There's a white guy. I bet a friend of Casey's. He said he, that he's great. He was great in college. Great. Oh, you were great. Are you being humble? A uh, quarterback. He said he's a great quarterback. Oh, that, that's that's nice and everything. But no, it was a friend of yours. He said that the only reason why you didn't start was because that guy that. Yeah, I see. I was in back of this guy in college who was who was the number one Russian quarterback. No, where in one double A? Where is he now? You can't play the option in in, in the pros. So he's coaching. Enough. You know, you can't. You behind can't. a guy was so good, but not good enough to play in the NFL. Well, no, but it's the offense we ran. He can't play quarterback. He's not. He's not big enough. And I don't understand. You mean you never threw the ball? You just ran with it? Pretty, pretty much. We would. Uh, so didn't. The, so uh, how did you guys ever throw the ball? Not really. You'd throw the ball maybe ten times. Ten times a game. Most of it, you would run it. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's you know how like um you, mean, girl. you know what a shotgun is, right? You know what the shotgun yeah. is, the quarterback and he throws the ball. But I thought quarterbacks can do it all. They can run plays where you run Everybody and right. and also be able to throw the ball. Right. You do you do a little bit of both. But and wouldn't it, wouldn't it also freak the other team out that the guy who runs the option could throw the ball? Right. Like, wouldn't right, you want a guy like, who could throw the ball in there? Yeah, but, you know, the guy... I never heard of a quarterback that I could play that. There are some coaches who would rather have total control of the game. What is he going to run? <laughs> You're telling me there's a quarterback that doesn't know how to throw the ball? Well, right you know, there. You know right there. Well, well, of course coach, he can't play. The coach is calling most, most yeah. of the running right. plays. That's there it is. Hey, I'm the same thing. That is. That's a coach who says, that my guys can't throw the ball. i got to run. You, you mean you wasted four years in college Five. running the option? Five. Five. Five oh, years yeah. running yeah, the option. The only you know option is, is, is the coach is making You know what your option is? You stay right here. You ain't going anywhere. <laughs> Howard, you know really what? any good. Would he have gone to a school where that's what they did? Here's right. a, Robin, you're, you're, you're adequate to the... You most colleges, most colleges run. Most colleges like. run the option. Yeah. 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 Wait a second. Wait a second. Wait a second. <laughs> You're telling me you want to be a you were a quarterback for five years who never threw the ball. Well, we th we threw Woo! sparingly. We didn't throw that much because that's and our you offense. Throw long passes, right? That's you just our offense. offense. You know why they the did that? Because you couldn't throw. No, that's not true. It's of course, it's, no, it's not. if you could throw the ball with why precision, would they, let you throw? they would let you throw the ball. The coach said, "I got a quarterback." Case, if you got a guy that you're good ah. out of high school, has got a phenomenal arm. The coach is throwing, then he wouldn't come to our school. The, the coach is throwing his playbook out the window to adapt to that guy. No, then, that guy wouldn't come to our school. A, a guy, a pocket passer, would not come to Western Kentucky. School. 
I mean, why? Good. Because I can't throw the ball. What is it? You don't know how to throw the ball and you're well, a quarterback? I can, I can throw the ball, but I'm... Uh, uh, I never heard of a quarterback can't throw the ball. <laughs> I never heard of this. Right run. Run. I don't know anything about the game, but if I'm a quarterback, I'm going to be able to throw. I, I heard heard a quarterback. Howard, Howard did ball, you ever okay. run the ball yourself? Yeah, that's what the option is. Right. You, either, you, so you, you would run, run it. Or you ever see like, the guy pitches it? Right, it's an option. The end, that's right. the option. So right there. You can run or you can pitch. Maybe you could be, what, a running back? No, I can't be wrong. Casey, fade back and get Howard's lunch. That's what you're good at. So special teams. Yeah, you go out, you get my lunch, and you return with it. <laughs> That's what you're good at. Howard, let me just let me just explain this. Uh, he's not doing. You have to pass that to somebody else. He kind of did. <laughs> Chef Bobby should. <laughs> Chef Bobby's the one running the, 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 the so that the play. That's the option. Howard, <laughs> the option is just the coach is calling. The option place. is whether Casey gets lunch or Chef Bobby brings yeah. it down to himself. Yeah. Well, usually, you, Chef Bobby brings it down. Casey's playing yeah. behind him. You're still running the option. <laughs> you big dumb football <laughs> player. Howard, it's the coach. What a is career! Calling, the coach is called right. running plays, and you—I pu- right. don't care. I would kick the coach in the crotch. But that's what I'm saying. He had a coach who knew he couldn't throw. So you're <laughs> telling me that you're also—you have some sort of ability to kick the ball, punt, punt the ball, which is a, which player. is a big specialty, Howard. Right. So why don't you go try out for that? Who's stopping you? you yeah, right. You know what? And punters don't have to be in shape. So <laughs> he's so silly, Howard. There are some teams that I've seen teams go through three punters in a season because a right. punter is really important to the team. So here he's got this talent. Yeah. That but he might be his it. best asset. And I only did it. I only did it for two years in college. And he's do it. At, but he, but you were, were you were you were leading something. You were leading I, the lead. I, I, I did all right. Yeah. I had, well, well, tell me, you, 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 you brag a little. Um, let's see. I, I was uh, one time I was conference um, player of the week. Um, what does that mean? Explain that. I had, I had a couple of good games, and so they, they once once a week they, in the conference they give uh, you know they, they put out the uh, player of the week. One did guy, anybody did, do the any week. of the... Explain that to me, Gary. Okay. It, it, the conference is eight or nine or ten teams they play on a Saturday. Right. Of that week, they pick one guy out of all those games and they say he's the player of the week because he had a great out. Okay. So if you had that and you can consistently punt the ball, what does a punter make in the NFL? What kind of money? I heard league minimum was uh, 300 grand. All right. 300 I mean, grand. You get to heard. travel with the team and if you're really good, you get an agent, you maybe even get more. Right, you're good looking. There's a bunch of ugly guys who punt. At least you can turn it into something. Yeah, you might be able and to do endorsements. Surely that 300 grand is more than you make here. Yeah, I can vouch for that. <laughs> yeah, that's a little bit, a little bit. Yeah. You might be able to in the locker room too. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah see, so that's what I really miss. You prick. <laughs> you miss showering with guys. Yeah, I miss, but you know how it is. I, I saw these guys come off the field. Coaches yelling at them and stuff like and that. I'm like, you know what? I'm not supposed to be on the phone. I'm a big dumb animal. I got to at least try. You know. Why don't you try them? In other words, when you were ki- when you were player of the week, did any of the scouts NFL teams or scouts come and look at you? Coach Coach kept saying, "If you can do this consistently, then then you you you, could, you have a chance of playing." But then I I got a couple blocked, and that just screws your whole average up. So I never never tried. You got a couple blocked. Is that your fault or the team's fault? No, in that case, you know, someone doesn't block somebody, and you get a zero averaged into your average. So it, I see. It, it, so it, you it didn't ruins it. They're looking at raw numbers, but but I asked Casey, can he punt? And he said he went out the other day, and he was kicking him pretty far. How, Not how, too bad. How, how far? August. Um, what, what you want is you want 45, 45 yards and an angle. Four four point three hang time. Ed. And what what and, did you have? And I could I could I could do that. I mean, I could do it, but not every time. How many times can you do that out of ten well, kicks? I would like to say uh, three, three out of four times, hopefully. Oh wow, that's a good average. You know what, Howard? NFL punters do it about three out of four times. They're usually well, yeah, douchebag. Yeah, practice, Casey. You might get better. Yeah, let's yeah but you know, I, but I, I shank him every once in a while, and you know, the guys in the pros are so much. So you're better. afraid of shanking him? Yeah, shank. Yeah, you know you what? See this guy from the Jets. That's where you like yeah. totally. Howard, that's yeah, embarrassing. Yeah, in fact, that happened during the Jet game the other day. I don't know if you saw, mm-hmm. but the, uh, who were the Jets playing? Denver. Uh-huh. The guy kicked it, and it went about. Ten yards, nah. you know, and, and he kicked it with all his might. But the guy <laughs> and how it, and it wiggles in a weird way—it's very embarrassing. The guy, the guy from the Jets is awesome. This guy Tupa, yeah. I saw him kick yesterday. He was—he was at the end of the end oh, zone. Yeah. He kicked it to the to the ten on the other. So one. can you do that? No, that's no. that's unheard of. Right. But maybe you have accuracy. No, that's right. I, I, sometimes I, I, you got to hit a corner. I can see I can... Casey kicking it into the stands. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's happened no, before. You know John, you played against Casey in college. Yeah. What do you guys think of work with him? You're trying to get him, get him to go. I'll do anything to get him to leave. And, and, no, I mean, if the guy's going to sit there and pine away, I certainly had dreams in my life. I just kept them simple. I could well, have been a about the concussion he got his sophomore year when I knocked his ass out of the game. What was that? I knocked him out of the game his sophomore year. The only option KC ran in college was the option of whether he was pitching or catching with his boyfriend. Uh, <laughs> this is nobody. All right, all right, thank you. Hey, Howard. Yeah. I miss rules. Quack, quack. <laughs> <laughs> he sure does. I'm watching, uh, you know, I love to watch the political shows. So, uh, Fox News Channel's in a commercial. CNN evidently runs commercials the same time as Fox News Channel does. They they do yeah, that. get together on that. So, I tune into MSNBC. They got 
I miss in the evening. In other words, is it, yeah, you know, he did what I did, of course. I figured out to put my my radio show on television, so he had to do it. He did it on MSNBC. And the show is death. I mean, he sits there and talks about politics, it, and he's like a bizarro. You don't even know where he stands on anything. It's death in every aspect. It's visually, it's, it's death. It's unbelievable. He has he has just aged so much. He doesn't have he a has cannula bad in his nose again. Neck to I sorry, you're talking at the same time. What? Does he still have that green thing going up his nose to give him oxygen? No, he doesn't have the tube anymore, but he might as well. <laughs> What did you say, John? He has a bandana on his neck to cover his, like... The turkey neck. Turkey. And he's got that big dumb hat on. You see that? Yeah, what's that? And the, Is where do the headphones go with the hat? Yeah, he's got, like, matching headphones. <laughs> like, the headphones fit with the hat. <laughs> it's pathetic. How can you get? Oh, he's just so friggin' gay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he just really is. He should really be a catcher. <laughs> He's not even a pitcher. But and and then and then you know what? And like these women call up like reporters. Hello, Mr. Imus. Uh, you know they all they all buy into that. And he's like, that Mr. Imus so guy. what do you think is going to win the election? Like the whole show is who do you think is going to win the election? You know what, douchebag? In a day we're going to know who's going to win the election. You can't make it happen. He goes, he goes. Uh, well, here's what I predict: <laughs> George W. Bush. And he's starting to lose his voice, like Walter oh, Cronkite. Really? So yeah, it's breaking up. It's breaking up. He's like. George Bush. Getting all flimmy. Yeah, he's gonna. Uh, he, uh, he's, you know, he's all befuddled. George W. Bush is gonna win by five or six points, I believe. Oh. And, I, and, I, and, I, and, I, and I'm gonna uh, vote. I, I'm, I'm gonna vote for uh, George W. Bush because, uh, well, I don't know even know who I want to vote for, but I'm just gonna vote for him, and uh, you should vote for whoever you want because that's what I'm doing. Well, Thank you. This is this is what the show is. I mean, I'm listening to this. I go, what is this guy's? This guy's like, he's like, he's he's got like toilet mouth. He just he just rambles. He's got diarrhea of the mouth. And he goes, I, I'm going to vote for George W. But I don't even like the fashion. And, uh, but you, you vote who, whoever you want to vote for because you should vote your opinion. It's like he ran out of things to say a yeah. long time ago, but his lips won't stop moving. And he goes, and you know, and, and Russia and them, they, they all think you know one thing, but I think the other. And it's, it's like what? And and he goes. And, 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 and mumbling through the whole thing. I don't. They say he's got an audience. I don't know who could listen to this. You know what that audience size is. They're they're all close to death. And he goes. And and uh, uh, I gotta tell you, Charles. Uh, you know, I think that we're gonna be looking at Senator Clinton. Uh, I'm having a hard time. I'm having a hard time uh, saying that. <laughs> but uh, yeah, you're having a hard time. And he goes, but but anything. but I gotta tell you, Charles. But uh, I believe that she was gonna is gonna win by quite a few points. Uh, I totally believe that all of his <laughs> listeners come from the fact that the people are too old to get up to the station. Yeah, I mean, and you and and I'm literally I'm not joking, man. This is how it sounds. <laughs> and I got to tell you, uh, you know, uh, uh, Hillary, uh, she's you know, and 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 and, and, and <laughs> I mean, it's like, what are you talking about? And he really does win. Kerchief all the time. Yeah. yeah. Turkey gobble. I, I like my kerchief. <laughs> and you know, you know what the weird thing going on over there is? It's such an ego trip now. Everybody has to pretend that he's like this huge star. So it's um, I man weather, I man sports. Everything's yeah. I man. Everything's I man. I man time. Yeah, we don't. <laughs> when you get the time, it's I man time. Because he's so important. And then, then this woman calls up. Hello, Mr. Imus. We're with um, we're with uh, Jane Seymour from uh, the. <laughs> Al Gore campaign. She's out there right now. How's your how, how's your man doing? I miss Weaver. You sound like you have a cold. Thank you for noticing, Mr. Imus. Yes, that's true. I do have a cold. Yeah, so well, nervous. you know, uh, you're, the vice president, who is so annoying, uh, uh, is, is you know, he's outrageous because he calls the vice president right, annoying. Right. Vice president, so annoying. is he losing his voice? No, Mr. Imus. He's well, oh, well, if you remember, in one of the elections... Uh, if you were losing your voice, that meant you were going to lose the election. Whoever lost their voice for... And I'm sitting there and I said, this is it. I'm out of here. I don't even believe this guy. <laughs> now, if you lose your voice first, you lose the election. Is this a real... This is what, it's, this is what he's about. Uh, is this the show from the morning or is this a special No, edition? it's the morning show. It's, it's a, oh, it's yeah. And it's death. It's deadly. It's deadly in it's the morning deadly. it's deadly in the evening. It's de I miss evening, afternoon, summertime, wintertime, fall or spring is deadly. You can't listen to it. I defy you. I will tell you that. I will tell you the worst death to listen to that show because I've heard mm. it sometimes when I've been on vacation. Is his brother and he are sometimes co-hosts. Yeah, it's here in two Imuses. Yeah, I know. know. Two dead guys with two uh, dead voices. Hi, 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 how are you doing there, Fred Imus? Oh, 
Oh. And when Charles goes on vacation. No, no, Charles is there, and he has so to. The brother's deal with always it. on the on the phone too. Right. Oh. How you doing? How you doing there, Fred Amish? <laughs> uh, you know we're we're over here <laughs> with the barbecue sauce. Yeah, we got barbecue sauce. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I love the old Imus who, you know, at one time in his life he didn't care about anybody. Now he's found mm. people to love. Yeah. You know, he I loves love my, his wife, who's uh, the best woman he's ever met. I love my brother. And I, think, I love my brother. I, think yeah. the deal with I the love bro- my crotchety old brother. I think the deal with the brother is that the brother... The brother's now, like some loser who needs uh, Imus's, you know, radio show to promote various bad products. And I think one of the things the brother does now is he lives on the ranch for dying kids and helps mm. run that. Yeah. yeah. So he has a place to live and he helps them. And, yeah. and, and distribute the products for him. Yeah, way to go. In other words, he's his butler. <laughs> you know, it's man the servant. I man servant. It's the brother who could never get anything going, you know, and always had some wacky idea, and now he's got this idiot with a radio show trying to sell his barbecue sauce. Because remember at NBC, mm. we, in the hallways, you would hear him complain about how his brother had called him for money again for some idea that he didn't want to be part of. Yeah, right. So instead of just giving him money now, he just helps him sell stuff. Right. Yeah, and and has him like work at that ranch, which is a whole right. big tax write off. <laughs> Yeah, or we got a ranch. We help cancer kids, and we make them work the farm. We don't care. But this brother he tried to avoid all his life is one of the people who loves. Yeah, him. yeah. I love my brother. I love my brother. I mean, he used to, he used to say he's bro- like lies and learn a lot. They're yeah. making up at the end. You know what I mean? Absolutely. He used yeah. to say flat out, "My brother called me today. I wonder how much that's going to cost me." Yeah. Mm. Yeah. yeah. But now he knows his brother loves him, yeah. and he loves his brother. I think about my sister. I mean, we don't ask each other for a dime or anything. It's just really pleasant. It's a pleasant relationship. You like get her phone calls. You don't worry. Your your skin doesn't start yeah. to uh, change. Yeah, she doesn't call me up and go, <laughs> You know, I'm in the kitchen making barbecue sauce. I'm wondering if you could sell it to your audience, a bunch of dopes. <laughs> so, so, you know, that's that. it was unwatchable. I had to just get out of there. Tom, you're on the air. Hey, Howard, how you doing? Hey. Listen, I got the answer for Casey. Get the football uniform for him. Have him dress up in it. Then he can go get your lunch in a football uniform. Ooh. Hey, why don't you put on a uniform when you get my yeah, lunch? And every idea. once in a while, as he's going down the hole, people can tackle him. Yeah. yeah. yeah right. <laughs> Bloody him up. Nice. I have some Casey stats here, believe it or not. Go ahead. So, uh, Casey played, this is uh, his 1997 season. How do you have this? Um, uh, Gangie printed it out off the internet. Wow. wow. So, I could see the week that he was player of the week. He had. So, here's a week. Where they beat a team 38 to 24, he was four or five passing, and he rushed for 173 yards. Wow! wow. However, however, <laughs> um, the first game of the season, he was he rushed Big for blockhead. minus 13 yards. <laughs> no, a, I've got a punt block probably. The I second game of the season, he rushed for 11. The last game of the season, he rushed for minus two. So although he had one game with 173 yards, his net for the season must have been a real bad team. Was 174 yards? No, not at all. The, the guy, the guy ahead of me was he was the best player in one in one double A. The team went seven and zero. Oh, so he didn't get on the field. But no, but Howard, that was you know that was that was quarterback. That's playing quarterback. So you know I was playing in fourth quarter and stuff like that. If he got hurt, I would play. But then I was the punter, the special teams captain. Right. But Howard, he he passed four to five, so he does throw the ball. Right. But yeah. five five times. Yeah, but in little game. passes. Yeah, you yeah. know, they're those little... Uh, <laughs> stuff I could throw. <laughs> <laughs> I like to see you out uh, there, what man. What do they call those little slant passes? A screed? Uh, yeah. Dude, let me tell you something. Back if I practiced there. like you did your whole life, I'd be better than you. I'd be in the pros. I'm saying, I'm saying, I'd like to see you out there. That'd yeah, be good. how does he get out of college and wind up here? There's no football yeah. here at all. See, I went to college, and I majored in radio, and I ended up in radio. Right. You went to college, majored in football, and ended up in radio. But Howard, right though, I don't think he really wants to play, because every Sunday you know, we play football, yeah. and I've been asking him to play, he never comes. He doesn't like, want to play with amateurs. Yeah, you guys are losers. He's a professional. Oh, I'm not. <laughs> I'm, I'm definitely not. But all I'm saying, man, it's just like, you know, if you, if you don't take a shot, I'm going to be so, I'm gonna be like 50 years old or whatever. So do I'm it. Why did you go? Listen to me. Yeah, go all, walk do? on to the Jets. You want, I know guys at the Jets. You want me to get you an so, audition? So I told him that yesterday. You want me to get you an audition? No, that's all right. right. You don't got to do that, man. I appreciate. Do you it. want me to do it? No, I don't want you. I don't want you. You big pussy. No, I will. I'll, Go I'll, try. I'll, I'll Live your dream. Walk on and say you're from the Howard Stern show. They're gonna let you in. There. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. That's and that. That's, Howard. That's, and go in and kick the crap out of that ball. Show him, man. Punt. Show him. Punt, stupid punt. Show him what a fag you are. <laughs> Jackie, why are you screaming yeah. at him? Could you open your eyes? <laughs> Shower with the team. <laughs> You'll see what you got. That's, that's, really, that's really why, why I want to go. In the locker room. You'll have to shower down with them. Yeah. Wouldn't, it be, head. wouldn't it be fun to shower next to Jumbo Elliot? Yeah, that'd be great. <laughs> you got a big ass. Hey, but, you know, Buckethead. And one time in the shower, we had this. We had this. Where this is great. Buckethead? Bu- Buckethead. He's, he's uh, he coaches gym. Teaches gym. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's your buddy. Yeah. Uh, so what we should be doing. We got this big grate up there, and you throw your towel up there so it sticks in between the grate. So when you're done showering, you grab your towel. 
One time he winds up and he throws the thing and it falls straight on his ass and his legs, he's so fat he couldn't get up. So he's sitting there naked and his legs are spread up in the air and he couldn't get up. It was awesome. <laughs> so, yeah. He's so bad. Oh, it's so funny. Hey, we're guys. At him. We're kicking so bad at him. You, you like to see your, your fellow football yeah. players with their legs spread <laughs> with towels. He was like a turtle. The guy couldn't get up. <laughs> yeah. You are so three, gay. Three no, stories, guys to get up. no stories about the game or the tackles. No, the shower. The shower and the towels. Best recollections are the shower and the men's room. Towel snapping. What nasty ass. Yeah, this guy is the, the, bucket. the locker room can get incredibly gay. I played for a long time, mm. and I saw guys get it. Like, there were these two guys when I played football in high school, and their whole joke, the big joke was, one guy would run, well, like, if you were at, the, if you were at your uh, locker, one guy would pull your underwear down, and mm. the other guy would spray you in the butt with right guard. Oh, right. It's like a funny joke. <laughs> yeah, 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 big joke. Meanwhile, they're looking at some guy's ass. And yeah. spraying and him. spraying him. Look at the smile <laughs> on Casey's face. It's it's like, that's good. <laughs> no, with the, with the line, you, used to do, you want to know something? My my high school, I didn't. I never even saw a football game there. I know they had a team. You never got naked in gym, did you? Ever? Never. You never got no, naked. Never showered in public. Never. Right? Well, you sat around with guys, and not once did it occur to you to pull somebody's pants <laughs> down and spray them. <laughs> never thought about it. Thought about girls. Yeah. But I I know people from the high school. They are telling me the names of guys from that football team that are gay now, that are absolutely out of the closet. And they were all the guys who were beating up guys and, like, all, like, homophobic. Right. And they're all gay now. I mean, out of the closet, full-blown-out flamers. <laughs> when you can't be who you are, you have to kick the crap out of other people. Right. 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 You know how you know you know the linemen. Linemen are like really big guys, like like probably about like three hundred twenty pounds each. Right. You know yeah. what they used to do is we had this TV room before practice when they were bored. They would wad up little things of tape and try and throw it in each other's belly button. That right. was the game they played. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. There's a Why lot of everybody nude it's funny. and trying to touch each other. No, they were just sitting there with their big guts hanging out and trying to throw tape. And I was pretty good. I could I could right. get them. It's gay. It's, like, you know, you, there too. it's foreplay. You know what another thing they would do is you, well, you get taped up when you play football, right? So if you're out in the rain, you, when you take the tape off at the end, it gets really heavy. It's all wet right. and everything. And guys would roll it up in a ball and they would go into the showers and wing it at a guy and try to hit him in his butt yeah. to get him to get a well. Schlager balls. Yeah. <laughs> That's called Schlager balls. <laughs> I remember when I was working in a kitchen, we had a, a shower, you know? And one of the guys went in there, this guy Kenny. He was showering. Someone was mad at him, and they made big, wet schlager balls out of toothpaste and toilet paper, and they were wet, and they would aim it when he bent over to get it right in his butt. <laughs> right in the middle. Yeah, right in the middle. <laughs> yeah, little, and it gay, stung. Right? That's so gay. Home base. It's no, funny, though. I never took part in that. It's really uh, funny. Uh, it's funny. He was I, the one, you know, we're trying to figure out a bet between John and Gary right away. What is it? It's urinating on a hand. Right. right. Yeah, yeah, that's funny. That happened in the shower. Right. Yeah. So you can still do all that stuff without sure. going through the pain of playing the game. Yeah, no, that's, yeah. that's not, that's not what, the, what it's all about. That's sure. just some funny mm. stuff that happened. Right. Yeah. Hey, Adam, you know, when I went down to homecoming, mm. Uh, Buckethead was seeing this girl, right? Hmm. So me and my other buddy get this idea. Buckethead got a girl? He's seeing this girl. Wow. It's, it's weird. So he's, he took, a, sure. took yeah, us over to her apartment, weird. and uh, we get this great <laughs> idea. Like, let's, you know, he's, she's meeting us for the first time, too. So let's get this great idea. We're all going to take a number two. Right. I'm going to go, and then oh. you're going to go. <laughs> and then we had another guy go, too, right? Yeah. So we get this girl's apartment. She's never met us before, and one of them rifling off into the bathroom, <laughs> letting it stink, and one of the guys left it in there. He's like, oh, great, guys. It's really funny. Thanks. <laughs> They went over to the girl's house and... <laughs> 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 oh, <laughs> the girl. <laughs> so the whole apartment stunk? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, your friends are really nice, man. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Is she still seeing fucking uh, it? I think so. I don't know. Oh. You guys are, so, you guys are such a dick. <laughs> you guys are such a dick. <laughs> Hey, Who went first? Um, did you go first? No, I didn't go first. Oh, you, you had know. to go he, in there, stinky. Yeah, but it's, it's all right. It's all right. <laughs> I mean, I bet, revenge. I bet they watched each other. Yeah, you see, like everyone went in and moved their bowels. Yeah, How many guys watch, went? There was three guys. And Buckethead saw what was going on. He was mad. Yeah, he was like, you're going over to meet the girlfriend. And you just guys just do it in their <laughs> apartment. <laughs> Did you let these guys near your girl? <laughs> that means that he had to sit in the, in the bowl smelling his friends the whole time. Yeah. Yeah. There was space that was like, you know, <laughs> that's what you need to be like, right? <laughs> 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 well, come on, that's funny, man. <laughs> 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 yeah, let's go make a new. <laughs> That's so funny. We'll all go. We'll all <laughs> move our bowels. Whose idea was it, Casey? 
Uh, I did my friend Moses. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Moses parting the ball. <laughs> did anybody you play with make it to the pros? Uh, a couple guys. There was one guy who played for Baltimore. But he got cut. And another guy. Uh, Works in the bathroom. <laughs> plays in, <laughs> <laughs> for San Francisco and he just got cut. But they're trying for the XFL, I believe. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, all the losers. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds like be... nobody from that team made it. Yeah, that XFL is going to be some league. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I got right. cut from San Francisco. <laughs> I suck. <laughs> no, they're going to they're going to. I thought you were you were. Um, I'm trying about, to buy a team. I'm trying to get a team. Oh, that's why he came to you. He thinks you're going to be a team owner. Oh, right. stop it! No way! I know. I'll put you on my team. No, no, no. I don't want to. No, just <laughs> something totally different. Don't worry. Why don't you try out for XFL? Seriously, you're punting. Know, I don't know. Well, I, you know, I got to get in shape. Hey, you could be a quarterback for the XFL. No, I can't. How much shape do you have to be in to kick the ball? Not much. Yeah, well, exactly. A lot of those guys are fat. I have to and get what kind shape. of shape could he not be in? He exercises every day. Yeah, but no, it's not the same thing. I mean, I screw around and lift weights and stuff like that, but I don't do the workouts. I don't do the plow metrics and all the stuff that we used to do. The plow metrics. Yeah, it really helped you, the plow metrics. <laughs> what about being a clown in the rodeo? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll put you in a barrel. Get in a barrel. Yeah, I'll get in a barrel. But, you know, it's, 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 it's not the same so thing. So why don't you try if, you, if you're thinking about it? Yeah, I, I, right. I have to, you know, find out. But I'm not a punter, though. I'm not. I, but it's, you know, special teams. Not oh, a punter. okay. Who cares? It sounds like you are a punter. I'm not. I'm not. It what are like you? He just wants to be on the field. Why don't you? What are, are you? you good at? Um, I, what are you going to try out for? A punter would be like my end, but then hopefully I could, split, I could play special teams. But a lot of coaches don't want you to play anything else because you can get hurt. Right. So, so be a punter. But, but how? But punters like you know, this wimpy. Dude, at least you'll be on a team. Yeah, I know. A lot, it's a lot less wimpy to get my lunch. <laughs> when he closes his eyes, you, you know, what do you see yourself but it, but playing? What position? Well, I, I always love playing quarterback. So what's it you want to be a quarterback, so why don't you go off a quarterback? Because I'm not, I'm, no. But you can't throw why the ball. No, I can't, I can't, I'm not you? smart enough. You want to be a quarterback, but you can't throw the ball. No, I can throw the oh, ball. You don't ball, think you're smart I, enough? No, you think Doug Flutie's a genius? Yeah, dude, you have to You have to read defenses. You have to You have to know where, where people well, are going to be. They always change and fool you at the last minute. Mm. I have never so. seen anybody who loved doing what they can't do. Yeah, and, and forget that you're not a football player. I couldn't remember the play, so I had to have them on my wrist. So forget it. So forget it. It's over. Why don't you just be a center and bend over? Yeah, why don't you do that? But everything he says he loves to do, he really can't do. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I understand. I, I, you know, I can't you play suck. quarterback. No, I don't suck. You spent all these years playing college, and then you don't even go out for anything because you think you suck at everything. Not smart enough. Well, that's just how, that's just I'm my not issue. smart enough to be a football player. <laughs> uh, I agree with him. That's that's my yeah. issues, you know. But yeah. uh, so, are you going to go out for a team or not? Are you going to stop uh, talking? I'm going to I'm, I'm give it a shot. And are you going to go out and try and punt? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Hey. That's what I thought. Yeah, but it, don't call me a punter, though, because I'm not. Right. It's, you know, You're going to be a punter, but no, it'll be special teams. Special teams. All right. Right. Can't you wear you a mask You can't read a defense, yeah. huh? No. You know, like, Rob, you know how hard it is? Every play that those guys have, they have like s seven or eight variations due to the, the defense. Oh, I'm so bored with this. Like yeah. How do I get I, him out of here? It's, uh, you can't. you got to put him on a team. <laughs> Casey, yeah. our, our, our guest is here. you got to go talk to them. Who's that? Uh, I leave. Just tell me to leave. I'll leave. Oh. When, when are you going to tell me that, you dis what? that you, I disgust you? I don't know. What does it say up there? So what about a guy who's going to pitch us oh, yeah. his version of Survivor? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is, this is good. He's got a special version that he's pitching just to you. Oh. oh. For your production company. How right. quick, uh, let's predict how quick I'll throw him out of here. Well, I, I can tell you a little bit you about, you about right it. Away. Yeah. It's a uh, it's Survivor with um with fel uh, uh convicted felons. Convicted felons. Well, that sounds good. Yeah. All right. So he doesn't have to come in. There. Yeah. I mean, good. What do you want me to do with that idea? Hey, I, I'm not going to some island and producing that show. You, you don't want to be on the island with a bunch of convicts. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> get rid of he's, got a, he's got some funny rules that he's got in mind. All right. <laughs> well, we'll talk to him in a minute. I got to take a break. Wish you luck with your new career. When are you leaving? Yeah. But Can you, you give you us your notice? Wait, Kenny, you want me to go? <laughs> give us your notice. Yeah, I right. can't be a football player because then I have to try and outsmart other football players. <laughs> <laughs> Howard, you know what? What I was going to say is it's a common misconception with guys who play college ball, yeah. especially at a level that Casey played. Like, look, Casey's big to us, but in football, he's a midget. I know. Yeah, you know it's true. I mean? It's true. I mean, you're talking about you want a quarterback. And there's going to be 300-pound guys who do the 40. Doug Flutie's a quarterback. Doug Flutie's is he's, probably he's, his size. Yeah, but I would not. I would not even entertain the fact going to quarterback. I'm not good enough. I told you. I'm six foot. Yeah. Doug Flutie has one of the greatest arms I've ever seen. I know. You know what? You could kick the ball. Do yeah, that. That's what I do. Yeah, but that's yeah. 300 grand a year minimum. And if you're real good at it, you could probably get more. But Absolutely. you know the difference between Casey and Doug Flutie. Everybody told Doug Flutie he couldn't do it, and Doug Flutie thought he could. Hmm. KC isn't waiting for anybody to tell him. He no, tells himself no, he can't. No, do you know what? I, I, when I was in high school, <laughs> they told me I couldn't play college football. They told me I was too small. But, uh, you know, I was captain for two years, so, hey, screw them. So, this is another one. 
Okay. I, I got it. I, I love you. What? But you know what? You got to find a, another daddy beside me. Oh. Honestly. What are you talking I, I'm about? tired of hearing your problems. Play me, daddy. You know, Dan. Right, you know what? I won't put, me, put me in the game. All right, I won't talk I'll to you ever again. Never, I'll never get over it. I got to go take my shot. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> See, now he's getting bummed. No, no, no. no. I was just saying, we were just, we were just <laughs> rapping and stuff like that. And, you know, because I usually talk to you. And I talked to Gary. And <laughs> All right, all right. God, it's gone that hmm. far. Yeah, we talked to me about it yesterday. The thing I don't understand is that punting is really his best way in, mm. and, and he, he maybe he can do it. It makes no sense. And he doesn't want to do it. Yeah, right. Who cares, then? It's like Ringo wanted to be a lead singer. I'll get you an audition if you want it. No, that's right. I don't want nothing Try out. I, no, I don't no, want anything we'll from you. We'll all go. We'll cheer you on. Well, what do you yeah. want? I want nothing. Well, do you I want, want nothing from you. I talk to you like a friend. It. That's what I talk to you. So do it already. Yeah, Stop whining about it. I was just rapping it. to you. That's Stop all. your whining. Don't be gay. Right. All right. We're going to take a break. I love you all, though. I really do. Right, good. We'll miss you. Join fag. Yeah, we're going to miss you when you're out there playing. We'll watch you. We'll come watch you. We'll be on the bench. Imagine if he went to work out with the Jets and we all went to watch. Oh, oh forget on. about it. That's going to be great. We're going to get the E crew down there. Absolutely. You talk about a party. Watch because you fail. In any practice, you get your ass kicked like you ten fail. times. You know what right, I mean? Right, right. So I can see just string them back to back. And all right, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna take a break. You this fairy. Was, yeah, we're gonna. This was fascinating. <laughs> and we'll be back right after these words. Um, yeah. So Monday, I will be on the Jay Leno Tonight Show. You know. You know. God knows what what that's about. And I don't want to be pre-interviewed. I don't. Like, you could talk to me about they, anything. They don't do that to you anymore, do they? No, not over there. They don't. No. Because you know what happened? One time, Jay tried to pre-interview me. He kept calling my hotel room. I wouldn't pick up the phone. <laughs> I told him I'm not picking up the phone. I wouldn't. I don't want to talk ahead of time. There's nothing to talk about. I don't want a pre-scripted uh, situation. If like, you've already had the conversation, why well, have the conversation? Yeah, so tell me, I understand uh, you uh, were uh, in a uh, you were, you had something about fire on your mind. Uh, that's right, Jay. The other day I was in a fire. So what did this I hear? <laughs> what does I hear about uh, what's this? Uh, that you're dating? Yeah, well, what, now, now, now I understand you're uh, not married anymore. Is that right? Now what happened here? <laughs> yeah, you know what, Jay? I feel like making that a funny little bit for your show. The whole goddamn family's in disarray. I want to talk to you about it. That's right. I got some jokes. Yeah, over, but... yeah I got some real great jokes, you big chin bastard. <laughs> You know. Well, why don't you do what I do? Tune up a motorcycle and hide in my garage. Laugh at my pain, you yeah. bastard. Yeah, what's the matter, Jay? You want to? What do you need? A snappy routine on the end of my life? <laughs> oh, okay. Let's see if I can make you laugh with my marriage problems. <laughs> Let's see if I can't make that happen for you. What else do you want to know? Want to know if I dye my hair? <laughs> yeah, what about that? I hear you, you Cindy Adams said you dye your hair. I you don't. Say that even to the paper. I, I've never put any dye in my hair. Oh, okay. No big deal. All right. What's this about some show you're doing? Or something? <laughs> I, well, it's about the uh, Son of the Beach. It's going to be on FX. Oh, okay. You <laughs> <laughs> sound pretty good. Hey, you wanna you wanna hang out for the rest of the show? Do whatever you want, but don't don't kiss anyone. Don't. Uh... Just sit there. <laughs> Hey, hey. Don't draw attention to yourself. Mm -hmm. Whatever you want, just don't be you. Right. <laughs> pussy, pussy, pussy. That's all you talk about. <laughs> don't ask in my house. Right, yeah, oh, man. <laughs> don't ask in my house. I don't ask in your house. <laughs> go ahead, go over and ask in my house. I don't even own it anymore. <laughs> Do whatever you want. Not my house. Go ask wherever you have to. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you don't own your house anymore. Tell us about that. What's that like? What's it like to have your guts ripped out from you? I understand you lost your dog, too, in the settlement. <laughs> yeah, that's right, Jay. I lost my dog. Oh, my How's that? Is that funny? <laughs> yeah, I understand. You know, a lot of people think it's a good thing this happened to you, you know? Like you deserve your comeuppance. Oh, is that right, Jay? Great. All right. I got to go. Goodbye. <laughs> Another tragic interview. <laughs> Oh my God! Now I gotta tell you, it's, uh, so I understand that now you're uh, you're single. What happened there? How come your wife uh, left you? So, uh, what's it like with the kids? <laughs> so, 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 what do you got? Visitation? <laughs> yeah, what on this? You know what, Jay? As a, as a just to make your show extra funny, I brought my lawyer out. Oh, I can tell you the details. <laughs> yeah, he's gonna he'll fill you in on the fifty-page agreement we signed. How long did it 
take to work that out. Yeah, what's that all about? How long did that take? Now, what's about, so, like, you don't kiss your kids goodnight anymore? <laughs> <laughs> you always yeah you yeah. You know, what's it like around Thanksgiving when you're all alone? <laughs> That's great, man. You ever get lonely? <laughs> yeah, I get sad and lonely. So uh, you got a bachelor pad. Yeah, what's that like? What's it, so who decorated it? <laughs> Sounds like you got yourself a real king of birds, yeah, Sounds like you're in big trouble. Yeah, that sounds like great fun. <laughs> yeah, so uh, who are, I wonder who else is going to be on the show Monday night. <laughs> I don't know. They only mentioned you. I hope they get a hot chick. They never do. Whenever I'm on that show, they never they get a hot chick. They chicks away. They do. They keep them locked in a box. <laughs> <laughs> it's Summer Hayek, my there love match. They do match you up. Yes, you is very cute. You are a See, you are a big man. You are a big man. You are a big man.